This then takes us to the next step. So, okay, maybe that's a problem with pain detection or lie detection in a courtroom. That might be a smaller use case. What about if governments or corporations decide that they want to roll these technologies out at larger scale? That what if is actually happening now. This is a picture, a stock picture of workers in China. Several factories in China have put brain sensors, uh, EEG sensors, in the helmets of their workers to try to detect whether they're feeling bored, angry, frustrated, disaffected. We could imagine that in the US this could be used as a technique to stop school shootings because we're a very security conscious country, even though we're very safe. It's a compelling argument for the use of those technologies. Protect our children. And yet, what are they detecting? They're detecting averages of impulses that relate in only an attenuated way to particular behaviors in ways in which the relationship between thought and behavior has not yet even been established. For uh, you know, a drug addict, a person struggling with drug addiction and recovery can crave a drug but not use a drug. A person may feel angry and never strike someone. The idea of being able to use brain-based data to engage in prediction that is of low quality, that is normed against groups that may not be representative of how I think and feel, and that may be imposed upon me, is really quite threatening, I believe. And we have far fewer legal protections against this than you might think. Our United States Constitution does give us a privilege against self-incrimination but that's only for defendants in criminal cases. It doesn't apply in civil matters. It doesn't apply to any kind of monitoring of the population at large. The Fourth Amendment only guarantees us a reasonable expectation of privacy, where reasonable is a balance against danger and safety, and technologically driven by what we can expect to have be private or not. 